Friends, I invite us to stand for the reading of the Gospel. Holy Gospel is taken from the first chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the 46th verse. Glory to Christ, our Saviour. Luke chapter 1, reading from verse 46 to 55. And Mary said, My soul exalts the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he has had regard for the humble estates of his bond slave. And behold, from this time on, all generations will count me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is upon generation after generation toward those who fear him. He has done mighty deeds with his arm, he has scattered those who were proud in the thoughts of their heart. He has brought down rulers from their thrones and has exalted those who are humble. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent away the rich empty-handed. He has given help to Israel, his servant, in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and his descendants forever. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Let's pray. Father, we come into this Advent sister, uh, season and we pray, Lord, as we wait upon you, that your Spirit stir our hearts and speak to us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Please be seated. And, and today, my friends, uh, we uh, begin our new uh, Christian year and we enter into the season of Advent. And over the next uh, few Sundays, we'll be exploring a few of the Christmas songs, right? The songs uh, 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 that uh, arose, right, in celebration of the birth or the promised birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, over the next few Sundays, we'll explore that. And today, we're exploring. We're looking into the Magnificat, uh, Mary's song. Well, today, as we said, is the first uh, Sunday in Advent. Right? And as was shared last week, uh, it is the beginning of our Christian year. Right? It's the start of a new year for us as Christians. Right? As we contemplate okay, uh, all that the Lord has done for us, and we look forward right, to the days ahead. The word Advent uh, is derived from the Latin word Adventus. Uh, meaning coming, all right, coming. And in this case, it refers to the coming birth of our Lord Jesus Christ at Christmas and the return of our Lord Jesus Christ all right, during the second coming. And so as uh, people uh, in the Old Testament and uh, the New Testament, I look forward, I look forward to our Lord Jesus Christ all right, and celebrate His coming. So too, we celebrate His coming and look forward to His coming once again, when we think in terms of the Magnificat, uh, it's called the Song of Mary because it is and it was sung by Mary. Right? And the reason why it's called the Magnificat, again, comes from another Latin phrase, the Magnificat Anima Mea Dominum, right? Uh, my soul doth magnify the Lord. The basic meaning is to esteem or to revere or to venerate to praise, right? to celebrate, to honour our Lord God through praise and thanksgiving in song. Uh, something that we have just done right? as we sang the three uh, Advent hymns together, right? remembering and celebrating our Lord God. When we think in terms of the Magnificat, uh, we have to first think in terms of its context. Right? And the context is the first part of uh, Luke chapter 1. It right, begins with Luke chapter 1, verse 5 to 25, right, where the angel appeared to Zechariah. Zechariah was a priest in the temple of the Lord, and the angel appeared to him and said that your wife is going to bear a child, right, and the child will ultimately grow right, to become John the Baptist, uh, proclaiming, uh, preparing and proclaiming the way of the Lord. And then it goes on to uh, verse 26 to 37, where the angel Gabriel appears to Mary and says, Oh, blessed are you, you know, uh, you are going to right, uh, bear right, the child and you are going to name the child Jesus and it's going to be the Messiah. Right? And then finally, 
in uh, 36, uh, 38 to 45, right, uh, when uh, Mary went to visit Elizabeth, okay, uh, the child that Elizabeth was carrying leapt, and Mary and Elizabeth rejoiced together as Elizabeth says, Oh, blessed are you, right? So through these uh, so occurrences, right? So it, it was a, a build-up, you know, right? Uh, Elizabeth had an experience, okay? Mary had an experience. When they came together, they shared the experience. And out of this, out of this uh, shared experience came the Magnificat, right? The song of praise, the song of, uh, of uh, veneration and honour unto our Lord God Almighty. As we look at this uh, song, uh, the, the Magnificat, uh, what can we learn? What should we learn? Well, I'm going to suggest that we can learn three things uh, as we uh, enter right, uh, into this season of Advent, uh, uh, the New Year in preparation of our of coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right, the first thing I suggest that we learn is the growing appreciation. The growing appreciation of the tremendous honour bestowed on a humble uh, born slave, you know. Uh, Mary received it, you know, and then as she, as she walked, as the pregnancy took, 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 took effect, all right, and, and began to grow within her, and she, she met up with Elizabeth, there was a growing sense of appreciation of the honour that was poured down to her. She was just a young virgin girl. You know, she was just a a born slave, uh, uh, an insignificant nobody, you know. And, and back in those days, of course, while women were at equal and, and revered status, they were still, you know, a little under the men, all right. And so how could she do that? And the great honour that was placed upon her to become the surrogate mother of our Messiah, of the Lord Jesus Christ, right. That appreciation of that honour began to grow upon her as she as she became pregnant, right, as she was accepted by Joseph, as she met right, her cousin Elizabeth. And of course, then there was also that monumental impact, uh, the appreciation of the impact of, of what it was that she was carrying within her, right? The child that she was carrying within her was it's the Messiah, it's the long awaited, thousand years awaited Messiah, and the impact that this child has on the generations, right? So when she says that the generations will call me blessed, my friends, uh, it, it's not an inward-looking thing, right? Yes, we revere her. Yes, we honour Mary. But it wasn't an inward thing. The generations call her blessed because truly, right, by what she, uh, uh, by, by her, the honour bestowed upon her, right, the generations are blessed with the birth of the Messiah, the long-awaited Messiah, the Messiah that's come, and the Messiah that will come again. I trust that, uh, you know, when we receive visitations, right, uh, it, it stirs us, you know. But after that, we begin to wonder, we begin to doubt, right. But as Mary then received the impregnation, as she then received the, the reception by Joseph and by Mary and by others, and here, Right, about uh, Zacharias' uh, encounter with the angel, then the growing sense of appreciation and thanksgiving right, will grow in her heart for all the honour that the Lord bestowed upon her and what that honour will mean for the generations to come, for each and every one of us who are seated here today. And then, my friends, I suggest the next thing that grow within her is that burgeoning wonder, right? The sense of wonder, you know, the overwhelming wonder of God's copious, uh, uh, abounding uh, mercy, right? Because it says that despite His power, His might, right? Uh, might to scatter, to bring down, right? To send away the rich, uh, despite His might as the almighty creator of the universe, the Lord chose, right? The Lord chose uh, Mary. The Lord chose to fulfill His promise. The Lord chose to send the Messiah. We've read many times in the Bible how the Lord gets so angry, you know, He wants to snap His fingers, say the word, and then start all over again. 
And you and I, you know, uh, when we get, walk in our daily life, in our work, in our relationship with people, uh, we feel that many times as well when it comes to our work, when it comes to relationship with people. Uh, we want to just wipe everything clean and start all over again. But the Lord never did so. Right? The Lord, at the end of the day, always turned right, and showed mercy and grace upon us. And my friends, you and I, you know, with our family, with our friends, uh, after a few times, we, you know, chukop uh, already, right? Enough already, right? The Lord bore with us, right? Humanity, hundreds, thousands and thousands of years, right? Still bears that mercy upon us today. Despite His holiness, okay? Despite His holiness, the Lord showed mercy to each and every one of us. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 5, it says this, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 5, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation already to be revealed in the last time. What a wonder. So amazing that our Lord will do this for each and every one of us. My friends, have we looked, wake, woken up in the, this morning and looked in the mirror and said, my Lord did this for me, you know? It wasn't just for Mary, right? But it was for me. Have we that growing appreciation of the goodness and grace of the Lord for choosing us? Have we a growing wonder, right? That the Lord will shower His uh, mercy upon us. The almighty creator of the universe, the Holy One. Right, us sinners in his sight. Then finally, my friends, the rising expectation. Rising expectation in Mary of the promised help to Israel. Right? The rising expectation as the pregnancy wore on, you know, carry for six months, nine months, you know, and as the, the time comes for the birth, the great expectation, right? And, and as she grew in appreciation of what that, what that uh, the, the caring of the child meant and what the child is going to mean for the generations, the rising expectation, the promised help of Israel is going to come, is finally going to come after thousands of years, is finally just around the corner, right? There's that growing sense, right? As we remember... His mercy, right? And not just to the present, but the promise that comes to Abraham and his descendants forever. Of course, my friends, as we read this passage of Scripture, as we read the whole of Scripture, there's always a little caveat, all right? And the little caveat is toward those who fear Him, who have profound reverence and awe toward Him, who who lean towards Him and call upon His name. Okay? Uh, it's, it's not just because you are, you are born with a family surname or you're born in a clan line, right? but it's because you yourself, we ourselves, have made that decision, the decision to turn to the Lord God Almighty. And here we see that Mary herself, right, as she grew up in the in the the culture, in the tradition, in the faith, she herself must have been searching for and found the Lord God Almighty, which is why then she was blessed with the visitation, blessed with the honour of being the surrogate mother for our Lord Jesus Christ. We are thankful and grateful for her faith, right? And we honour her for it. My friends, uh, my last slide to us, a uh, quick sermon, right, today, yay. Right. Okay. This Advent, right, as we, as we remember Mary, uh, as we remember her 
her walk, her experience, all right, as we remember how the Lord uh, blessed her, right, how she grew in appreciation, how she, the, the wonder within her also began to flourish, and how the expectation uh, grew uh, within her as the time of the birth got closer and closer. I, I ask us, right, as we enter into this new year, to consider all of this for ourselves, right, for ourselves. Uh, through the course of this year, okay, has there been a growing appreciation of God's goodness and grace upon your life and upon my life? Right? Okay. You know, we are, we, are, we are better at complaining uh, uh, rather than, than thanksgiving, right? Okay. We are better at spotting the negatives than spotting the positives, right? If you don't believe me, just turn to your neighbor and name five good things about your neighbor. Okay. Right. Yeah. You got to start scratching your head first, right? But if I ask you to turn to your neighbor and tell me five bad things, oh, really, you know, easy to count off, okay? Right. Well, my friends, have we grown in our appreciation, right? We have celebrated the fact that God has saved us. But have we grown in our appreciation of what that means, you know? Right. And, and have we grown in appreciation that every day as we continue to make mistakes, the Lord continues to show grace and mercy unto us. Right? And as we, as, as we grow in that appreciation, do we grow in the sense of wonder? You know, the people that the Lord reaches out to, the people that the Lord welcomes, right? The people that the Lord says and calls us to reach out to, and with that sense of wonder, do we right, step forward and, and reach out okay, and do God's work as well? Okay. Will there be a sense of rising expectation within us? You know? What do we look forward this Christmas? Japan! <laughs> you know, that's what we look forward to, you know. All right. Uh, holiday, you know. All right. Uh, over in uh, Singapore Expo, there's a winter fair, you know, and the winter fair has gone on for, oh, last day, last day for the last three weeks, <laughs> four weeks, you know, and everyone is flying, you know, expectation is a holiday. But is there the sense of a rising expectation as we look at the birth pangs, right, the earthquakes, the floods, the wars, the difficulties and challenges around us, is there a sense of a rising expectation that our Lord is coming again soon? And if our Lord is coming again soon, have we the sense of urgency, a sense of urgency for our loved ones, for our lost, for those who are around us, for ourselves, to make sure that when we stand before God on that last day, right, you know, all of us will fall to our knees and say sorry, la, you know. But at least when we stand before God on that last day, can we be able to raise our head a little bit? You know? Not a lot, not to the sky, but a little bit, right? And be received by our Lord with the words, Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into your rest. As we finish this year, all right? Let us express our appreciation to God for walking us through another year, okay? giving thanks to Him for His goodness and grace. Okay? As we close off and begin another year, right? let us grow. Let us grow in wonder right, about over His grace and mercy upon us and look forward to His continued care on us in a year ahead. But more than that, my friends, I ask that we grow with that sense of expectation. Expectation, right? The sense of urgency. Our Lord is coming again soon, right? So let us, right, do His work while it is day to the honour and glory of His name. Let's pray.
And just take a moment, my friends, in response to what we have heard. Just take a moment to give thanks to the Lord for this year past. Not all of us have had a smooth year, but even through the difficult times, the Lord has been present, the Lord has been gracious, the Lord has been merciful. Let us look past our complaints and look at the silver lining on the dark clouds. That is always there because the Lord is gracious and merciful unto us. And then as we grow, as we pray to grow in that sense of appreciation and wonder about God's goodness and grace, let's focus on the fact of His return. He has promised and He will fulfill His promise. He has promised and He's coming again soon. Are you ready? Are you prepared to receive Him today? What do you need to do to prepare yourself to receive Him today? Are you urgent? Urgent in reaching out to family and friends and to the loss that the Lord brings before us? None of us are perfect. We all fall short. But let us pray, Lord, help me do better. If we come to the end of the year, it's always a time to reflect upon the year past, to make hopes, right, to plan for the year ahead. Don't forget God in the midst of all these things. Put Him front and center. Let Him be the center of all our lives forever. Father, indeed, uh, we pray, Lord, as we enter into this Advent season, that we take a step back, we slow down a bit to remember, to give thanks, to remember and to contemplate, and to remember and to hope and continue to press forward in persevering hope unto you. We ask this in your Son's name. Amen.